everybody, welcome to my channel. Long time no see. It actually feels like I haven't made videos in years. It has been months, I'm not gonna lie. Reason is I lost my flash drive, I couldn't find it for months, and suddenly a week ago it just popped up in my bag. So, no shame, I actually, it was my fault. But I'm here, I'm back, and I come with great news. I got in! Yay! I'm going to be officially a dental student starting this January. So I decided to finally make a video and I feel like I have a lot of a lot more freedom to talk about stuff that I didn't feel comfortable talking about before because like why would you want me to talk about a bench test that I failed, you know, if I didn't get in. So now I actually feel like I have a right to talk about stuff and actually tell you how to study for it and my advices would actually be valid. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the whole application process and this would be like a good guideline for people who haven't watched a lot of my videos or just studying the process. A lot of people message me on Instagram who know nothing and all they tell me is like, hi, I." I want to study in America, what should I do? So this video will be a complete guide to what to do step by step and in my future videos or in my past videos I actually gonna talk more in depth about each step. The whole application process is not easy, it's the most stressful thing I have ever done in my life and there were absolutely no guarantees I would get in anywhere for years. I heard of people who applied three, four, five times and only on their fifth try they would get in. It's not guaranteed that any of you guys or me or any other person who is applying is gonna get in. Chances are very slim. So if you guys are just living happily in your own country and just want to live in America, let me tell you, it's not easy, it's extremely expensive. Not to just study here, just living in America is very expensive. And most importantly, nobody's waiting for you here. There are a ton of people who will take your spot, will be happy if you drop out. There is no need in dentists in America. So it's not a good idea for people to move here just on a study visa to go to dental school. If your family lives in America, if you're getting married to an American, if you're definitely moving in to America and you're looking for a way to continue, to continue your career, this is for you. You need this, this is important. Otherwise, it's up to you, of course, your future, your decisions, your life. But my advice, I would never do this to myself if I didn't have to, you know? So this brings me to my next step. This was just kind of a word of wisdom. This one is actually very important. Consider the costs. Costs are extremely expensive, they're huge. So the school that I'm going to, just a disclaimer, just you know, I'm comfortable sharing this information, is almost half a million dollars for two years. So prices are high. If you want it to be cheap and fair, stay in your country. If you're coming to America, be prepared to pay. We are paying about twice as much for education than any other American that's studying here for the same classes, the same education that we're getting and it is very expensive. Besides that, you will also have to pay for your application costs and I have an entire video on how much the application costs just to apply and I will make more videos about just, I think I have to update it a little bit because I found some additional costs that travel is really expensive for interviews and like fees for bench tests. So I'm gonna update that soon. But it's very important to consider how much the whole process is gonna cost you. Okay, now that we got through all the doom and gloom, please don't think that I'm trying to discourage you. I don't, De definitely go for it. It's all worth it in the end, but it's very important to not get yourself into something that you can't afford. Just saying, because I care about you guys. I'm sorry. First step is to decide which route you want to take. There is a residency programs that you can do and there is a pre-doctoral programs or diploma revalidation programs, if some people called it that. And the residency programs are about two years, a year. They vary widely, depends on what you want to do. And the um, diploma revalidation programs, when you actually go to dental schools, are two years. So from dental schools, you graduate just a regular American dentist, they give you your diploma, you can go and get your license in any state of the United States, anywhere. With the residency program, it will kind of depend on your state, where you live. Um, some states allow working foreign dentists with just a residency program, they would allow you to get a license. Most states don't. I have a video on that, I don't exactly remember what I named it, but you can go scroll down how to get a license in the United States. 
uh, I talk more more in depth about it so you can go and watch that I went through a cap it wrote so this is a diploma revalidation program where you go to dental school and you receive your regular American dental diploma and you're allowed to apply for a license it made more sense for me because I live in a state Massachusetts Boston right behind me that does not allow work just with residency so I had to go to a school that would grant me an American diploma because I know more about it, majority of my videos are going to be focused on that. And honestly, it's more popular route. So today I will continue with that. After you decided, if you decided that you want to go to a dental school for two years again, you have to create your CAPIT application. It's very important to start with that because a lot of people start translating their diplomas, send them into ECE, and they miss a big step that they actually need to do. And the CAPIT application will actually give you a sense of what schools need. On the CAPIT application in Add Program folder, you can actually see all of the programs that participate in CAPIT and all of their requirements. So it's a very helpful resource. You don't have to go to every school's website. They are all uh, listed there. So it's very helpful to just see it, but also it's important to have an account to get your ECE um, translation and your diploma evaluation. So this brings me to step two is translate your diploma. If your diploma is not in English, to submit it to ECE, which is an evaluation agency that will make your foreign grades American grades, they need your diploma translated into English. So I found an easy, cheap agency from Russia. I just sent them a PDF, very fast, very simple. That was just the cheapest I could find. Does not matter where you translate it. This process, creating your account and uh, getting your diploma evaluated, I started in about December. I would say you should start it in like November, October. So like now time, if you're watching it as soon as I post it, it's November now. This is the time to do it. So now that I mentioned CAP and every new application cycle starts in March. This is what confuses a lot of people. March is the time that you can actually submit your complete applications. It doesn't mean that you can't create your application and fill it in before March. In March, like March 1st when it opens, it will like blank out and ask you if you want to retrieve your application from last year you can click yes and it all saves so don't get freaked by that you can fill it on all in before march i did my application was already before the march started i actually was done in like february so make sure you do that first. To get your ECE evaluation, you have to go through CAPID website if you want your evaluation to actually appear on your website. That's your original goal. You, you do want that, actually, trust me. A lot of people just miss this step. It's a common mistake. I also talk more about it in my video, how to register for NBD. If you wanna know that, go take a look there. But general idea, you go to academic history in CAPID application, you pick your college, and it will ask you to retrieve transcript from that college through ECE. There's VES and there's ECE. Um, just a quick note, like I'm not telling you tons of stuff. ECE is worlds apart. It's much better. It gives you an option of doing WES. Don't do it, do ECE. It's much easier because WES asks you for apostyle or apostille, I don't know how to call it, but it's a special uh, like a stamp on your documents from the ministry of your country. It's a huge pain, so just don't bother with it. ECE works fine. Next step, after you get your diploma evaluated, you should register for your NBD part one. I must note that NBD part one is changing. They're canceling the whole NBD stuff and they're creating a new exam called INBD. I also made a video on that, so please go take a look at that if you know nothing about that. It's very important because actually I think this is the last year that they're making NBD, so you should really do your research and find out about INBD, which is like integrated or joined NBD or whatever they're calling it now. Next step, after you registered, and I definitely recommend you register first, and then start studying. You should not study for more than two, three months, two to three months, because it just gets really mixed up in your head. All the information just completely confuses you. It of course will depend a lot on your schedule. I had a video on how I studied for NBD part one. If you wanna know about that, you can also go and watch that. But again, it's very personal. A lot of people ask me what is the best time to take NBD. I heard, don't take my word for it, but I heard that American students have until March to pass their NBD. So they would pass their part one February. So that would be the busiest time because like everybody wants to pass it the last minute. So it's very busy and March actually American students don't take that exam anymore. So you will only be scaled with 
um, your peers, so foreign dentists. So it's kind of affects scaling a little bit. I don't know if it helps a lot, don't take my word for it. It's my theory, I think it does. And I took my part two in summer and I definitely saw more people taking part two as well with me. So I do think it's much more busy your time and it does affect your scaling. So if you wanna know when to, the best time to pass NBD, it's March. Right after you pass your NBD and got your results back, you have to submit your applications. You don't have to wait for your NBD results to arrive actually but to me it actually makes more sense to wait a little bit i submitted my applications after i received my nbd because each application costs about 200 dollars so you definitely don't want to spend that money if you did not pass your nbd because that's the main comp component of application if you didn't have if you don't have the results of the exam you will not be considered but the fee is non-refundable as soon as you submitted your application so like April, March, whenever, start studying for the bench test. If you don't know what bench test is, is the test of your skills that school makes tests in their own facilities. You have to go and actually prep teeth. So you have to prepare for it in advance. You don't wait for an interview invite, actually start prepping as fast as possible. I will talk more about it in my future videos. I have a lot to say because I didn't expect bench test to be so difficult for me. Because I'm a recent graduate, I felt like I knew the rules and I knew how to do it. I didn't. I needed a lot of practice. So even if you're long practicing doctors, every single school has their own rules about preps. Like you don't even know, like I didn't even know those terms, like fishtail, I don't know, dovetail or whatever. You will learn all of that when you dig deeper into bench test. Every school have their own requirements for the bench test and how they want actual cavity to be prepped. You need to learn that. After you did that and like during that process, you have to start studying for your part two, NBD part two. Again, it's changing. It's probably gonna be singular exam, but if you do want to take part two, you don't have to. You can apply with only part one. You don't need part two. And I know people who got in was just part one. So if you do wanna take it, I would recommend it because it opens wider range of schools where you actually can apply. I think with part one, you can only apply to like 10 schools. You need part two to actually be more competitive and increase your chances. So if you get a chance and if you want to, you should start studying for your part two as soon as you pass your part one. Of course, give you some time to rest, but don't hold it for a long time because you will need it for future applications before their deadlines expired. So I started studying for my NBD in about May and I passed it in uh, August. I also have a video on how I studied for NBD part two so you can go and watch that too. So you will start receiving your interview invites in around summer, late summer probably. There are some early schools that actually invite and do the whole process very early in like May. So if you apply to those schools and you're awesome, you probably will get those too. I started receiving my interview invites in about September. As soon as you receive your interview invitation, start preparing for the interview. A lot of people don't care about the interview and think we'll just talk about something, but in my opinion, it actually is the most important part of your admission. You can be amazing with skills, but they just don't like you as a person, you're gone. So interview preparation is very important and I will talk a lot about it. I actually read books. I spent a lot of time prepping for the interview because I actually suck at prepping teeth. So I thought that was my only chance really. So definitely don't neglect interview preparations. It's very important. And basically after you did that, after you went and took your interview, all you have to do is just wait for your uh, acceptance letter, which I hope you all will get. I did, super psyched. So I'm moving to Oklahoma. Uh, University of Oklahoma was my first choice. My husband is going to University of Oklahoma Law School. So we're both going to that school. We're super excited. And we're moving to Oklahoma in about four weeks, I wanna say. So the house is crazy. We're packing now. We're very excited. So I actually have time now to make a lot of videos, which I'm gonna try to do. Don't hold me on that, maybe you won't. You know me, I don't post a lot. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on my Instagram. My Instagram account is linked to this YouTube page. Just go to my channel and there's on the top of it, there's my Instagram account. If you have any video recommendations, what you wanna know, what you wanna see a video about, something you don't wanna research yourself, don't know, can't find information, Ask me in the comments here. Leave your video recommendations in the comments of this video and I will take it as a template for my future videos. 
So that is everything I wanted to tell you today. I'm very excited as I tell, told you. I'm very happy. We're moving soon. So good luck to everybody and thanks for watching. Bye.